I have way too many gimbals, but when Feutech reached out to me and said they were launching a new, small, inexpensive gimbal, I said yes. I'll check it out. And here it is, the Scorp Mini. Feutech is marketing this as a 4-in-1 gimbal, which in simple terms just means it can support large cameras, small cameras, action cameras, and phones. With the right adapters, technically any gimbal is a 4-in-1, but I'll rest my case. Anyway, this Scorp Mini does have a lot of great features, but let's first start with the design and close-up look. This is a very small gimbal. Here it is next to the Zhiyun Crane M3 and the M2. S, and while the design is certainly different with this sling arm, the size is right there. And the weight is similar too, 640 grams for the M2S, 872 grams for the Scorp Mini, and 912 grams for the Crane M3 as they stand right here. This Scorp Mini is really just a tiny version of this Scorp Pro, which is an astonishingly good gimbal. In fact, I would say this is just as good as the Crane 3 Lab if not better in many ways. Starting at the bottom, this gimbal comes with a tripod mount and a mini tripod to attach to it. This tripod is cheap feeling, it's hard plastic, unlike the better quality rubberized mini tripods you get with other gimbals. It's not as bad as the one you get with the Crane M2S though. The grip is excellent, rubbery on the front and the rear, with just enough space if you have a medium sized hand, and there is a trigger button here for your index finger. Just above the trigger button is a well-hidden USB-C port for charging the gimbal. This port supports 18 watt charging so you can go from 0 to 100 in 1.6 hours and the runtime is rated at 10 hours which is impressive. There is a multifunction scroll wheel here which feels really good in the hand and can be customized to control a number of different functions. You don't have to go far though as you can use this switch mode button to toggle between letting the wheel control pan, tilt, or roll. There is an FPV mode button here dedicated and on the other side there is a power button and a lock for the pan motor. Now the sling part of this handle has some cool things. There is a Scorp Mini logo here, a function button F1, and on the other side an F2 button. Toggle button here that moves up and down and left and right, record button and M mode button. Now the screen as I have mentioned is a touch screen and the menu is nice and simple, easy to navigate and figure out, a huge improvement over the Crane M2S interface. The grip here is a bit on the small side, and while it does have a grippy texture, the overall construction of this lower part of the gimbal is all plastic, and not premium feeling plastic either, just typical plastic. The benefit of this is the gimbal does weigh less. Now the arms are made out of metal or aluminum, they feel much better as a result, and these arms and locks are unique and well done. Instead of lever locks to button everything up, Feutech designed these circular locks that tighten in one direction and loosen in another. They are functionally well done and they also clean up the design of the gimbal a bit as there are fewer levers everywhere. The axis lock tabs are done very well as well. They all match and are bright silver making them easy to identify and use. At the top there is a mounting bracket with two USB-C ports that can be used to control your camera or a range of other accessories such as focus pullers which can be purchased separately. As for mounting your camera you have an almost quick release style plate here. You place your camera into the slot and tighten it down. If you remove the camera you just have to remember the position to not have to rebalance it again. It's not a bad design and overall this gimbal is simple to balance. Everything is done on the top plate and the turn to lock axis arms. It's a good looking gimbal that's easy to set up and has a nice touch screen but there is one thing that makes it better than the competition and that one thing is payload capacity. You guys remember from my M2S review that the payload capacity of both the M2S and the M3, although not officially publicized, is just about 2 pounds. I tried balancing my heaviest lens on these gimbals, the Sigma 85mm f1.4 art, and it was a failure. Okay, so check it out. Here is the gimbal with the Sigma 85 art and my A6600 on it, and I'm going to turn it on. And would you look at that, it actually does work quite well with no issues, it balances perfectly, there's no vibrations, no problems, nothing. This is a big deal because what Feutech has done is opened up full frame mirrorless users to tiny lightweight gimbals, whereas the Crane M3 and M2S can be used with APS-C cameras and lightweight full frame setups. The Scorp Mini allows you to put heavy professional lenses on your full frame camera and balance it all. 
Part of this has to do with the torquier motors, but the other part is that there is simply way more room for you to balance a larger setup here versus the smaller Zhiyun gimbals. So let's take a look at this gimbal's performance with my A6600 and a variety of lenses. Ready, set, go. It's smooth, it's easy to use, it's comfortable to hold, and you can make any adjustments that you need to make on the fly. Now there is an app for this gimbal that you can use to tweak settings, but I didn't even download it. Everything that I typically change with a gimbal, I was able to do easily with the touchscreen on the back, which is a very good thing. So you might be wondering how this gimbal compares to something like the Crane M3 or the M2S. Now, the M2S and the M3 really have identical performance in my experience, uh, but I did want to compare this Feiyutech to the Zhiyun. And so what I did is I had my wife and my baby girl just follow me or really walk towards me. And I did the exact same camera, A6600, the exact same lens. And here are the results. And I'll leave this up to your guys' interpretation because both gimbals do a good job. This is all the way out at 50 millimeters to really test out that stability. My opinion, the Scorp Mini is smoother. I see less horizontal and vertical shift in the background elements as my wife walks towards me. And I think the big reason for this improved stabilization is the grip. The sling grip is always better than a two-handed axe grip. It offers more stability and it makes controlling the camera movement easier. Now the Scorp Mini doesn't have a built-in LED video light though or a microphone hookup like what you can get with with the M2S or M3, but if you just want a simple gimbal that does what it's supposed to, provide smooth stabilization for video, the Scorp Mini performs. And it does have a wide variety of other shooting modes and features, auto subject tracking, motion time lapse, the ability to do 180 degree and nine square stitched panoramas, automatic rotation, app control, the list goes on, but I don't think that's why most of you will be interested in this gimbal. I know for me, I just want the basics to be dialed in. Is it ergonomic? Is it stable? Is it easy to use? And the answer to all of these questions is yes. Are there issues? Yes, there are a few small ones. The first is something I already mentioned. The build isn't overly amazing. It's just pretty basic plasticky feel. I would say that from a build perspective, the Scorp Pro, the big gimbal that I just had out earlier, is a 10 out of 10 because that's all metal. It's amazing. Uh, I would say that this one is a 5 out of 10 in overall build. I would rate the Crane M3 as a 6 out of 10 and the M2S as a 4 out of 10, but that's very subjective. Second, the so-called quick release bracket on this gimbal is not my favorite. It works fine if you remember where to place your camera and you tighten it back up, but I do like the quick release design that you get with the Crane M3 a whole lot more than I do this. Third, the tip of this grip handle does get in the way if you are planning on vlogging your life with this gimbal. So just be aware of that. Fourth, in terms of navigating the menu, this is a little bit challenging at times because when you swipe to go back, which is the normal way to go back, 
it doesn't always recognize your swipes the first time. So I found myself trying to swipe backwards two or three times sometimes in order for it to work. If you're expecting iPhone responsiveness from this touchscreen, just don't. Lastly, I wish it came with a carrying case. Instead, it just comes nicely packaged with dozens of cables, screws, tools, brackets, and adapters so you can use this gimbal with a wide variety of cameras. Overall, these are by no means deal breakers. To the contrary, there are a lot of things that I really like about this gimbal. The way that it charges is so much better than the competition. You see a giant charging circle with a percentage so you know exactly how much battery you have. Unlike every other gimbal out there where you're just staring at four blinking battery bars. The menu interface is excellent. Stuff is logically categorized and in the correct submenus. The control wheel changes resistance and clickiness if you are in a menu setting where fine tuning is necessary. Underslung mode is easily done because of the grip layout. The whole thing feels light and agile when you move it around. With the Scorp Mini, you can grab your camera and point the gimbal where you want it and it will stay there. This is so much faster and easier than trying to compose your shot by toggling going up down left or right every gimbal should be like this okay so i'm wrapping this review up it is a great gimbal and when i tell you the price of it it turns into a phenomenal gimbal because this thing is launching today on Kickstarter for an impressive price of 199 US dollars Yes, under $200. That is $70 less than the M2S and a whopping $170 less than the M3. So you're getting a lot of value out of this gimbal because it holds more weight than either of these two gimbals anyway. For the money right now, I'd say that if you're looking for a small, lightweight, compact gimbal, there really isn't anything better than this Feiyu Mini. Uh, but that's not to say that in the future other gimbals won't surpass this. I'm sure they will. But competition is really good, and I have to say for 199 bucks, you really cannot beat the Scorp Mini. The regular price of this is going to be $299 in the future, so if you are in the market, take advantage of the lower initial price. Only the first 100 of them are going to be $199, the next 100 are $219, and then they go up from there. So check out the link down below to read more about that. So if you already own a Crane M2S or a Crane M3, there's really no reason for you to upgrade unless you need the greater payload capacity, but if you are brand new to Gimbal you don't own one and you want to jump in, this is a great place to start. And I'm excited to add this Scorp Mini to my Scorp Pro because now I have a family of Feiyutech gimbals. Pretty awesome. Anyway, that is going to be it for this review and this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and you learned something from it. As always, thank you so much for all of your comments, all of your likes and your support. Stay tuned for more and have a nice day. Bye-bye.